Welcome back. Question is, how can we make our particle systems look more realistic? Here's a particle system to start with. It's looking pretty good, but there's a number of issues. Actually, it's not, it's not too bad. This is pretty good. Um, but I was just noticing for one thing, these uh, pixels are always the same size. So if I go back, they kind of look the same size, not super realistic. Now we could say, okay, let's put a billboard for each of these particles, but the implementation we have for billboards at the moment is just, it's a, it's a full on class with its own update methods and everything. And we have quite a few particles here. So one approach, which works pretty well, is to make what's called a geometry shader, which takes as input a single point from the vertex shader, and then transforms that and outputs a whole quad in view space. And um, that's how we can get billboards onto the screen quickly. I guess before I go in, and go any further, it might be worth looking at this code to see how this particle system was implemented. As always, link is in the, the description. Um, and I would strongly encourage you to dig in and have a look at that. But super quickly, this is the basic idea. We have a particle object, which just models a single point. So it represents a single point. It has a position, velocity, and acceleration. Um, it has a model transform, which holds really the position. And it has some other parameters here, like the color and the uh, li uh, life of the object and its maximum lifetime. If we go to the update function, well, well, here we just read in all the data. In the update, we increment our velocity according to our acceleration. Then we increment our position according to our velocity. If our position goes below zero, I'm taking zero as the ground, then the velocity is reversed um, and attenuated by a little bit. So it loses about 50% of its energy in bouncing back up. Um, and yeah, everything else pretty much stays the same. Tint is the final color for the particle. For that, we take the color and we set the alpha. Um, so the, the alpha reduces over the life of the particle and this makes the particles fade away. Now in the creation, we go to the scene. At the moment, I'm just sort of hard coding a lot of this stuff. Yeah, we'll go to make particles, essentially. And like I said, jump in here, have a good look around. But essentially what I'm doing is I'm generating a random X, Y, Z, and I'm using that as sort of a randomized offset from a given normal vector. And the reason I'm doing this is I'm working on a system so that I can sort of shoot the boxes. And when I click to shoot the boxes, the particles reflect around the incident ray. The incident ray reflects around the normal of the box and then shoots off particles. But I realize I am talking too much. So like I said, the code is here. It's basically just setting up slightly randomized directions, um, lifetimes and velocities for each of the particles and creating them. And yeah, let me know if you have any questions. But what I want to get into, also the shaders, just super quickly. So we have some shaders. Now I'm not passing in any position data. That position data is being held by the model. So if I just take the origin and the model transform is typically, it's a translation in this point. So if I translate the origin by this model, then that actually puts the particle into world space where it needs to be. But anyway, we just set the position and then on the fragment, all we do is read a color and output that to the screen. That's it. So. Um, now to the actual geometry shader stuff. First of all, I'm going to load in the uh, texture that I'm going to use. So I'll go to the textures. I'm going to use this star texture here for each of the particles. 
So I'll grab that texture. There, okay. Then I'll go to the engine and I'll set it up so that it's reading that. Okay, so we've got, oops, we've got a material pointer called star material. Okay, then we'll go to the engines load or create materials section. Star.png and we'll put that in star material. And similarly, we'll go to the engine destructor and we'll destroy that material as well. Okay, excellent. Great, so the texture should be working. And what we can do is we can go down here and in our particle shader, we will use the star material and that will be used in rendering. Okay, so let's go to the fragment shader and say, well, what if instead of a pixel, we had, or instead of a single point, we had a texture coordinate and we needed to sample from the texture. Okay, no problem. Well, what we would do is we would have, well, let's keep the tint color and we'd also have particle texture. And let's also take in a fragment texture coordinate and we can use that down here. We can go, okay, um, sample the texture. Great, but we've got a problem. And the problem is that our vertex particle, sorry, our vertex shader for our particle is not, in, uh, is not outputting this info. It is just setting a position on the screen. So this is the purpose of a geometry shader. A geometry shader sits between a vertex shader and a fragment shader. It intercepts, it has access to the same uniforms that all the other shaders have. And additionally, it intercepts the data that comes out from the vertex shader before it gets tessellated. Oh. Actually, tessellation sort of sits slightly mm, somewhere else, somewhere else in the chain. But anyway, don't worry about that. Before it gets rasterized and shapes get assembled and everything, we have the possibility of altering that data. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm Like I said, I'm, I wanna do this in view space. So I'm not gonna apply the projection transform yet. Get rid of that. And then I will create a geometry shader. It's as simple as, pretty much creating a vertex shader or fragment. So we go create this geometry particle. We've got that, okay. So we will set the language version and I'm going to declare the in and out layouts. So uh, the data that's coming in, so we're getting points the data that we're sending out is we are going to assemble shapes and we want those shapes to be interpreted as a triangle strip. In other words, the first three points make a triangle and then the last two points which are drawn are used with the next point so that the next triangle that we make will be joined to the first triangle and so on and so on if that makes sense. Uh, we're also gonna say, okay, the number of vertices, which we're going to send out, is no more than four. Okay, so that's our out layout. Um, for each of these, I'm going to step around and make a square around the point that we get in. So we're gonna have to declare the size for the square or not. We can hard code it, but I'm just putting it here for readability. Now maybe two, okay. And then this is where we're going to apply uh, the projection transform. So like I said, we have access to the same uniforms as before. And as well as setting the position, 
we're going to output the um, the texture coordinate. Okay, so like I was saying, we have um, what are we doing? We are assembling triangle strips. So what what we'll do is is for instance we'll go uh, define the bottom left vertex. So we set all the data that we need to do as if we're doing a run of the vertex shader again. And then after that, we go emit vertex. That's bottom left, then we'll have bottom right. And you can see how this is going. So just all the points we would need to make a square. Uh, top left, top right. Okay, after that work has been done, we'll then go, oops, and primitive. And that is it, that ends the geometry shader. So again, think about it like, I guess you could think about it like this. You could think about it like the geometry shader is the vertex shader many times. Because we, we run it as if we were running the vertex shader fresh and then yeah, see what I mean? So what we'll do is we'll take, um, if we were running the vertex shader, we would want to set the position on the screen. Why can I not type? Okay, so here it is, a little bit strange. Um, GL in, is the input from the vertex shader. At the moment, we just have one thing because we're just rendering one single point. But for instance, if we were drawing in triangle mode, then we would have access to zero, one, two. Um, and each of these is a struct, which has a number of fields. We have GL position, GL point size is another uh, data field, which we have access to, and GL clip distance. In this case, we're just using GL position. What we do is we take that position and we offset it by adding this 4D vector. This is moving it to the left and up, and that gives us our position in view, uh, view space. Remember, because we're in view space, this X is straight up left or right in the screen. This Y is straight up, up and down in the screen, if that makes sense. And then the other thing we need to do is we need to set the fragment texture coordinate. And this is just using, you know, local things. So uh, with the fragment texture coordinate, again, texture coordinates, zero is the left, one is the right, and up here, zero is the bottom, one is the top. So now we can grab this and we can just repeat this code four times. Okay. Uh, just adjusting it as we need. So this is bottom right. So we can switch that. And here, this is top right. So we can switch that again, make it right. And then these two are top, so they can have positive size. And one. And there we have it. That is our geometry shader. See how simple this stuff is? Okay. So just to recap, because this is the new thing that we're focusing on, right? We have the vert vertex shader, which at the moment is just taking one point. It sends that point bundled in a structure called GL in that gets sent to the geometry shader, which intercepts that data and sort of explodes the point, generates a bunch of new points, which are interpreted as a triangle strip. So again, the first three points make a triangle, then we take the last two of those points, union with the next point, and that makes a second triangle. And then there was another point down here. We, we keep going like that. And this is passed as if the vertex shader was run four times, and that's passed to the fragment shader. And that fragment shader has the position, because it was set, and has the texture coordinate, because that was passed along. And then it does its thing. I know I'm laboring this point a little bit. Hopefully it's useful. Anyway, so this is all good. 
but we just need to alter our shader shader compiling stuff and honestly it's a lot of copy pasting so here's what we've got if we look at load shader at the moment it loads a vertex shader and a fragment shader compiles them and links them now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a new function called load geometry shader which pretty much takes three file paths and we have it and uh, yeah loads them so I'll just go down there we go so let me just go back through here so now we have three files this bit here is loading the uh, vertex shader and putting all that uh, source code into a into a big string. This part is loading the geometry shader and doing the same thing, literally copy pasting the same chunk of code. This is opening a fragment shader file and doing the same thing. Okay. Then we go through here again, we create the vertex shader and check for errors. Do the same thing, create the geometry shader and check for errors. The only new thing we need to do is when we go create shader, we pass in the GL geometry shader option to specify that we're making a geometry shader and same thing here. Okay. Then what we do is we create the program and before we're just attaching the vertex and fragment, now we'll also attach the geometry shader. Okay. And that's it. Then we just delete all the shaders. So fingers crossed, we have this set up. Um, this should be working. Let's try it. Okay, that's not, that's not great. What have I done? Ah, yeah, fragment text cord not declared. Yeah, hey, rookie error on my part. I didn't even load that shader. So where are we? Create shaders. Here, let's load geometry shader. And that file is okay now let's give that a go huh interesting unknown layout specifier triangle stip stip yeah that is unknown isn't it Maybe I should just make this a comedy channel. Okay. There we go. Okay. So see, instead of single points, now we have these little quads that we're generating and we can look up at them and yeah, they look like stars. And um, yeah, now if we go further away, their distance does change because they're being projected properly. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Now it looks it looks a little little lame at the moment because we're just standing here looking at them. Um, but what we could do, and again, this is what I was trying to set up, is set this up so it's not a continuous effect, it's a burst. So when we click and shoot at a box or something, it will produce a burst of stars um, rebounding off that box in the appropriate directions. But anyway, that was it. So what I, that was what I wanted to go through. Just a little light introduction to geometry shaders. Um, Hope you enjoyed that, learned some stuff, and yeah, I'll see you again next time. Bye. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video and would like to see more, please don't forget to subscribe and like. If you dislike the video, press the dislike button twice, then click the like button three times. I believe in you. You can do it. Come on. Get into game development.